know the huge controversy over Vitorin, the anti-cholesterol drug that Shearing Plow Merck has? I mean, just so troubled. Well, Shearing Plow blew out the numbers today, and we sat down with Fred Hassan, first ever interview about this topic, to figure out what's going on and why that stock was up a dollar and why it's going much higher. Watch this. Fred, the news comes over, 6.40 this morning. I have uh, rarely seen a consensus that said that you were going to disappoint, do some bad numbers, numbers would have to come down. Instead, it was the best upside surprise I've seen in the pharma industry. Why were you able to pull this off in a, in a moment when the analysts had pretty much given up on you again, given up on this company again? I think uh, we were able to convince people that this is a broad company, it's a strong company, it's a very changed company. And this acquisition of Organon makes us even stronger and uh, people also realize that we have a lot of business outside the U.S. Sometimes... Uh, Most of any form. Uh, yes, and, and being a U.S.-based company, uh, this is a problem with many other industries as well. The uh, analysts tend to get very obsessive about the U.S. business without understanding that there's a global business here. And when we showed the strong growth of the company on a broad front, a lot of many, many products and many, many... Uh, regions around the world, I think people felt a lot better. All right now, one of the things on the conference call, uh, there were no punches pulled. You came out swinging. Analysts, uh, basically, along with long uh, owners, panicked. The stock goes from 34 to 17, all on one issue, which is your joint product with Merck. Uh, Zedia Vitorin is what our uh, viewers know it as. Uh, you had some strong things to say that this drug is not going away. It was your first real strong stance. Tell us why you have confidence that this is a drug that will be used for many, many years. The reason I believe in this drug is because it lowers the bad cholesterol, the LDL cholesterol. And I've been in this business for more than two decades. And I've grown up learning and understanding that if you can reduce the bad cholesterol, that's going to be good for you. But this enhanced study, everyone basically said that therefore the questions are going to be raised, although of course the heart associations didn't, but that there were going to be questions that would make it so that one day this drug could be pulled from the market. Was that a vicious overreaction? Normally when you talk about a drug having a problem, you start talking about safety matters or tolerability matters. In this small study where we studied this very special population that has very high cholesterol, so we use the highest possible mm -hmm. dose. In fact, the safety and tolerability profile came through the way it is in the package insert. So th this was really a small scientific study that had been started in a long time ago, many, many years mm -hmm. ago, and was of some scientific value but the most important thing was that the mainstream market lowering LDL that proposition is the same before the study results read it's the same now all right uh, you mentioned that uh, p that there was a perception uh, that created a, b a bargain an opportunity uh, most of the time I have seen CEOs when their stocks under pressure they might come in they buy uh, twenty five hundred dollars worth of stock or maybe five four hundred five hundred shares talk about your purchase in the open market so uh, when I came here in 03 right. uh, people were thinking this company was not going to be able to make it but at the first opportunity I got my legal clearance I went there and bought a lot of the stock at about fifteen dollars right. About four million dollars. Chart worth. looks pretty uh, convincing yeah. that that was the bottom. And uh, then when it, the stock went down to the twenty-one dollar range, I uh, said I've got to make a statement, and I could not buy the stock at that time because I did not have legal clearance. Right. So I did make the statement. The first opportunity I get, I'm going to buy two million dollars worth of stock at whatever the price it might be. The, the, the number that every analyst bandies about, and I think it's simplistic because they don't take into account the expenses, is that Vitorin is 70% of your profits, and if you took Vitorin away, you're finished. It's either of those statements correct? The 70% number is what's called gap right. profits. We are a joint venture, so we do joint venture accounting. Right. And it's uh, very hard to take that number and then apply that against our profit before tax number because that these products are very much a part of our company. Right. I don't allocate my time against that 70%. You've got to allocate a lot of time 
and money and resources in marketing the products, selling the products, and also the overhead against right. these products. Plus, we have to remember that any product on the margin is very important because the gross profits are high in our business. We understand that, uh, but we're very confident that these products are very sound products and we're going to make them grow. Well, but how about this? When you put together your, and we're going to spend some time on the gigantic acquisition, 18 billion acquisition, when you merge Organon with your company, there's no way that that 70% figure can possibly be uh, current. There's too much revenue and earnings coming from your new company. There'll be other uh, impacts and those right. will start to surface once we get a full quarter under our belt and then even more quarters. But yes, that was one of the strategies right, that I came in with in 03 to diversify so we are not in any way so focused on just one product the way we got focused on Claritin right. in the old days. And that was the reason why we did the Organon transaction. Now, you have been adamant that uh, when you and you've done many turnarounds which is why I bank with you first and then I bank with the company that you're with you've made a lot of acquisitions and often you have said that if you can acquire a drug company within a larger company that may not be focused or may even been starving the drug company you've got a bargain Axo Nobel Organon an example well uh, the Sugamidex product for anesthesia which is hopefully going to revolutionize the field when we announced that deal in March of last year, very few people knew about the drug because the chemical analysts that were following Axel Nobel had not understood the value of the drug. Also, the animal health business of Organon is very, very good. Excellent science, great growth. That, that business was not very well, well known. Let's talk about the, uh, this Sugamidex. Uh, what will make that different? I know when you go to a hospital, the anesthesia, that's where all the money's made in the emergency room, but I also know that, one, that, it, that people die uh, from anesthesia. That's just how a very terrible way that people die. Why will this change that? Well, uh, when you go under and you go into this deep block so that the doctor can do surgery like abdominal surgery right. and you shouldn't be moving when, when the doctor is doing the surgery, the anesthesiologist wants to pull you out of that deep block as soon as possible because you've got a breathing tube right. helping you at that point. Mm -hmm. And once the surgeon is done, he can then, the anesthesiologist can then use our new drug, Sucamidex, and rapidly reverse the anesthesia so you can get rid of the breathing tube and the patient can come back. It's a but that is big. That's big. It's it, a it very has to cut fatality, and I know that because of the nature of the business, any fatality can ruin a hospital. So this could, you know, anything that ratchets that down is positive. Now, the company was known as a birth control company. That is really just a cash cow, isn't it? It's a very valuable area. Uh, it's a, it's a, they have a very innovative product in this Nuvering, which is right, the alternative right. to the pill. It's the first new thing that happened in the field since the pill came out in 1960. Can you put money behind that? Can people learn more about it? We are going to make that brand grow. This okay. was again being run in a chemical company environment. In a pharmaceutical right. company environment, we have a great opportunity. The one under, under, the one area that's not well understood is that a lot of these products that we're talking about have long patent lives. That's the one thing that right. makes Shearing Plow okay, very but, different. Right. One of the reasons why yeah. I've been so adamant yeah. that people should own Shearing Plow is I look at the panoply of drug, of drug companies out there. Almost everybody is going to lose their biggest drug by 2012, except for you guys. You're the only one that has long-term patent protection. We go on and on for with many of our large drugs. Uh, this Nuvaring goes on for many, many right. years. Nasonex goes on. Right. Pegintron, our cholesterol right. products, long time. Now, how about this uh, acenapine for an under-marketed uh, business? It's a very interesting area. People had thought that this schizophrenia drug was not going to be able to make it because Pfizer had walked away from it right. in October of 06. Uh, we saw this opportunity. Again, we saw something that others didn't see, and the NDA was filed and has been accepted by the FDA for filing, mm -hmm. and it's at the FDA at this time. And drugs in this category do get used because it's a very unsatisfied category, and there's no way to identify which drug is going to work on which patient. Okay, given all these, and I'm not sure exactly the time frame of FDA approval, I know you have a big march. Uh, meaning for one of your drugs, but uh, I'm look, trying to build a model myself for our viewers, uh, and it would look like that even if you have a small decline in 08 for uh, joint venture income on Vitor, and you can still have an up year. Am I being too optimistic? 
We haven't given those uh, I know forecasts guidance. and guidance. You don't give it. But the one thing I did say... Money. We're better than this other place. The one thing I did say at the call is that we will take tough actions if tough actions are needed. There's a perception that if the Democrats get in... Uh, it has to hurt the drug companies. Is there anyone that you see, and you you know the landscape, that would actually, in the Democrat Party, make you feel like that you have to sell pharmaceutical this time around? I think uh, sometimes the rhetoric you hear is not really what's going to happen. L let's just talk about Medicare Advantage, right. the Medicare drug benefit. Right. Great program. Over 80% of the people using it are satisfied. Uh, the costs have come in a lot lower than what, than, than what was planned. And uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. So why interfere with a program where the costs are coming on in below what the, what the, what the plans were? I also think that uh, people want new drugs and innovations. And whether you have a Democrat or a Republican there, they are going to have to listen to what the patients are looking for. We we're, we're, we're trying to look for new drugs for cancer, Alzheimer's. Right. Why would you want to deprive patients of new drugs well, by the, interfering? You've got congressmen writing letters to you about the enhanced study that maybe you hid data that you're just part of the great, uh, I call it the Dr. Richard Kimball problem in The Fugitive, where uh, they, they, you know, they, they had the liver toxicity that they hid and Dr. Kimball exploded. I mean, you can understand understand that the Provasic problem, and the New York Times criticized me for thinking that that was a real drug, but there is a notion among you that that there are the, the Devil and McGregor actors that are trying to, again, a fictional company, New York Times, I know that, that are, are really basically trying to hide bad stuff. That wasn't the case here, was it? Well, we've heard about these anonymous bloggers who were yeah. saying something. Uh, this is on a Salesforce type website. Right. It's very hard to do much with anonymous blogs. We're going to work on this. Uh, right. uh, on these, but you didn't on, know. You didn't know that the, uh, the data was blinded till December 31 of last year, and I found out at 8 a.m. on the 10th of January. Why is this everyone year? so sure that you found out six months ago before that? I mean, why well, would congressmen write that? Why don't they? You, 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 what, what's the matter with the truth? Is it doesn't fit the thesis? They'll have to go through their own inquiry, but it's hard to do much with anonymous blogs. Right. Now, am I missing anything for our viewers who, I, who all know that I am telling people and have been pounding the table since 17 on this decline to buy a man, on man money to buy your stock? Am I missing anything? This is a good long-term story. Uh, if you go back to the time when I came, a lot of people didn't see much here and right. we've done very well. So I would just say... Keep an eye on the long term. This is a good business, good but, industry. But you have made, I, I, as my old hedge fund, we made a fortune because you turned around Pharmacia up, John, and then you, you sold it. I guess you could say anything can happen like that, too. So. Well, uh, we always uh, like to, to say that we're going to do it on our own, and we're, that's a plan. But we will uh, also keep other options in mind. But right now we're focused on, on, on doing the right thing for our shareholders, long term TSR, Excellent. total shareholder return. Total, I like that. Okay, Fred Hassan, thank you, very thank much. you so much. Good thank to talk you. to you.